need you and be with their families, Lord, and comfort them. I just pray that you will be with our people, be with our group leaders, Lord, be with their staff, and just add passion to their hearts, Lord, and just comfort and things like that, Lord, and come to them as Indian people, Lord, and, and I just pray that you will be with this committee as we make decisions and bless our families in Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. <clears throat> Shelly, would you do the roll call, please? Harley Bazard. Here. Chris Stout. Here. Bill Anglin. Here. Bill John Baker. Here. Jack Baker. Here. Julia Coates. Here. Bradley Cobb. Here. Joe Crittenden. Jody Fishinghawk. Here. Meredith Fraley. Janelle Fulbright. Here. Sean Garvin. Uh-huh. Tina Flory Jordan. Here. Curtis Snell. Here. David Thornton. Eric Allen Watts. Thank you. Next on the agenda is the approval of minutes. We have the December 18th regular session. Do I hear a motion to approve those? So Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Now I have the December 20th, the reconvene session. Do I hear that motion to approve those minutes? I know that to be approved. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed, same sign. Thank you. I want to thank everyone for coming out again this morning for our 9 o'clock meeting. I uh, don't uh, see anybody in the audience that we probably don't know. We have one lady sitting behind Charlie's sofa, visitor. Uh, would you like to introduce yourself, please? Yes. Um, my name is Debbie Wolf Wyatt, and I uh, just came out to gain some information. Um, I've told this gentleman that I'm pretty green and I want to learn what services are going on in the community. I work for Cherokee Nation Home Health Services, and uh, with a grant for Cherokee Nation, we have been working on improving these services, and I thought I'd better find out what's going on, so I'll know what I'm doing. Well, oh, good. Well, thank you for coming. Thank you. Appreciate it. Let's move into reports, and I know that uh, we have some reports that have been submitted, and I think they all have, but... Uh, I'd like you to go ahead and come forward, Norma, and uh, if anybody's got any questions, you might give us a brief overview of your program or any highlights you'd like to do. Well, I forgot my copy of what I sent you, so, <laughs> so be kind. Now, uh, well, we're, we are uh, just very busy. We're working on the transition with uh, housing. We'll be taking the rental assistance program, as most of you know. So David and I have been spending probably too much time together recently. So that's taken a lot of my time. Uh, we're certainly uh, in starting LIHEAP crisis. Jerry can probably tell you more about that. So we just continue to be very busy, continue to try to be uh, adding staff. From that report, I know that I had said we had a new person in uh, Stillwell and a new reception as well as an advocate in Stillwell. We've now added... Uh, a new person in Salisaw, so that'll be helping us out. It is someone that has been with us previously in Indian Child Welfare probably four years ago who's come back now. I think she's been taking care of her uh, sick mother. So we're glad to have her back. I think she's going to be a good addition to our staff. So we're slowly filling positions. They will be new, so we're doing a lot of training. Um, I know that we have a follow-up report on uh, from our special meeting that we had that addressed live heaps and questions that you have. So I brought Jerry to talk about that and also uh, Callie, Treasure Catcher, I told you, back there. She's also, uh, we brought her, she's uh, been kind enough to come and, and help us answer some of your questions regarding the, the financing of some of the okay, suggestions we'll, you have. All right, we'll get into that here in just a little bit. Then, right. Callie, but I do have a question for you on the child care in Delaware County. Have you, had any, have you had any luck on finding anybody up there? I know you were recruiting some uh, providers there in Delaware County. Is you're talking about individual providers? I guess it is. Yeah, working on recruitment of chair, uh, child care providers in Delaware and Ottawa County where there's a lack of services up I, there. I know you had a meeting there in Jay uh, three or four weeks ago to try to do that. I don't have a report. I can find out, though, from, from Lori. We, okay. we recruit constantly right. everywhere, so okay. right. they're yeah. probably having special meeting yeah. there. Yourself, Chairman Buzzard, we have a, a, a case that, that we've been working on, and 
and in, 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 in most situations, um, there's various departments that get involved in, in situations where human services are, are, are required and so forth. And so this question may run into different people, and I'm not so sure how we want to handle this. But uh, what, what I would do at this time, since you're up first, is just kind of go over the case and then and, and provide some feedback, and then maybe Charlie or David could, could comment as well. But um, we have a case here while back that, that you helped out with very graciously, and uh, we had a constituent over in Locust who had a wood pellet stove, and, 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 and luckily she had some conscientious neighbors that were looking after her and, and helping her. She lives in substandard housing, and there's several different issues there, and uh, received some feedback uh, from, from the neighbor who uh, uh, is, is, you know, uh, stepping up, making some phone calls on her behalf, and trying to assist as a good neighbor would do and uh, talked to him last night and he told me that uh, there were several things that he had called about he said the wood pellet stove they're still having some issues with the operation of, of the stove and feedback that he received was that uh, somebody advised that the, the, the stove was not installed correctly so now you know, you got an issue with the stove that we had resolved uh, before, but didn't we have an issue where the stove is, the, there's a question on whether there was a correct installation or not. So he's getting different information from different people. So I don't know if we need to, you know, uh, get the, the person who installed the stove and, and see if, 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 if they did install it correctly so we can... Uh, have their confidence level at a high level there in regards to that. Uh, the other thing was that um, in regards to the housing, she was advised by a member in the community services to go to Jay and fill out an application for a housing uh, rehab or a new house or whatever that service may be. When she got there, she was told that they are accepting any more applications until uh, the June or July time frame is what the feedback that this neighbor said. Um, I can talk about the pellet stove. So my stove. question is, is the, okay, go ahead. Um, I know that we, I know the case you're talking about, I can't remember the name. Right. And I think you're talking about a neighbor right now who's reporting mm -hmm. some of right. this okay, concerned right. neighbor. Right. I know that we had someone go out and work on the stove that weekend and right. got things back and, and running, but now there's, you're telling me there's still a problem. Right, and, like. and so they've, they've called somebody, and I don't know who, uh, we can get the name of who they're talking to, but it sounded like it was a female in, in a department, and they, and I don't know if this is the, the person that's telling them that the, the stove was not installed correctly, or if they're, tra if they're talking to the manufacturer. I, I don't know, but we can, we can address that. I, I will tell you, and this is where I'll need to call on uh, Charlie, uh, I think I told you all before that, that the only person that's certified to work on pellet stoves has moved from my shop because that uh, funding was ending and Charlie had hired him. So we'll probably need to, Charlie, get Curtis to see if he can go out about that, that house. Is Brian back there? Is Brian? She's fine doing it. It's not a problem. Okay. So we can take care of that, and I'll talk with them afterwards. I may need to get that lady's name again. And, and I'll send you some information because the neighbor was That's like, good. you know, if, if you can help me, then I can help her understand it, and then they'll, they'll both be on the same page. So if you'll send me that, then I'll get it to the appropriate people. In terms of the housing, it's probably a David question. Yeah, because yeah, it, it concerns me that the, the community services is sending people to Jay, especially in situations like this where, you know, we talk about the gas money as an issue and, you know, they, they get around it's like a wild goose chase and this right. is one of the things that we're trying to, you know, supposedly eliminate that by getting people, you know, coordinated and, and, and you know, on the same right. page and everything and it's just kind of interesting that, that that would be the case. The only, the only thing I can maybe summarize is it's a since it is an existing house, mm -hmm. that they sent them to the rehab folks, mm -hmm. and their rehab folks is in jail. Okay. Now, we should be able to take a rehab application at Pryor or Locust Grove or any other location where we've got staff. Right. Uh, and and uh, we haven't really coordinated that at this point. Rehab is 
was uh, over, you know, he'd been at the tribe for a while. Uh, now it's under me, and, and uh, hopefully, not hopefully, but we will have applications, folks. That's all they do is process applications. It'll be for her, it'll be for my folks, it'll be for rehab. Uh, but I, I really am concerned that they told them that they wouldn't want to take one until June 1st. I don't, I don't know where that came from. Yeah, so there's, there's a lot of things in this one specific case that, you know, I'm right. sure that when we do go to help somebody in situations like this, that they qualify for multiple services. And, and this is a elderly lady, she lives alone, uh, you know, and then, and then there's just several things there that I'm concerned about. You know, Mr. Sub, as I recall, uh, I believe I was sending a family advocate out there, an yeah. elder advocate, to assess that situation. So as soon as you can get me her name, okay. I'll follow up on that. Right. Because I, I remember that detail, and right. I don't know that I... I don't know if you didn't get a follow-up report. I probably didn't either. Uh, I don't think so. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, I need to check yeah. on that piece too. So. Yeah, I can do that after this meeting. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Councilor Gordon. Yes, uh, Norma, will you check and see what the policy is with Indian Child Welfare on picking up uh, children from uh, neglect cases uh, at school? We've had an incident. I think I know which one you're talking about. We picked up at school, and it was pretty. Traumatic. And if it was a neglect case, I know when I was in the court, we waited till after school. It's not that unusual mm -hmm. to pick them up at school. And my understanding was that that situation, it was planned for the family to be present to say goodbye. So it would be a, you know, it was planned out. There was a situation that arose that, you know, was outside the plan that uh, uh, happened. But you can't always project that. Uh, that particular situation, it was, uh, well, it just felt like it had to be done there. Uh, so I will check and see what the process is, but I do know that there are times that we have to do that. Well, I can see it if there's imminent harm, mm -hmm. but on neglect cases where it was, it had some appearance that you were working with the family, possibly it would have been less traumatic for the children at school as well as the children being picked up if it could have been done in a little bit different situation. I, I think I have a report on that one because there was, I did get a concern about that. I also had that concern and when I heard it. There's always two sides to a story. I yeah, believe I got the other side. I wanted you to check to right. see what, I got a couple calls on it. Right. And I just didn't want us to get into a situation where we were combating with the school sure. administrators. Yes. I, I believe I can get you one on that exact case. It was several children, right? Uh, or it did, was. Did several. Had like several same, different last names. Same and family. Same family, mm -hmm. two different moms, several mm -hmm. children mm -hmm. with several different last names. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you could maybe follow up and let me know, I'd I can. appreciate it. I think I still have that one on my desk. It yeah. just happened, I think. Okay. Okay. Hey, thank you, uh, Norm. Mm -hmm. Oh, hang on just one, Dr. Scott. I'd just like to publicly go on record and, and say uh, I really appreciate the work that Jerry Snell has done up in Washington County. Take a bow. You were hiding behind there. I'm sorry. I, uh, I really appreciate that. I've had some, some issues up there. and and uh, his experience definitely came in handy. Thank you. Thank you, Norman. Mm -hmm. Next on the agenda is Community Services, uh, Charlie Soap. And uh, Charlie had submitted a report also. If uh, anybody has any questions for Charlie, Charlie, why don't you come forward just a little bit. Uh, uh, I want to ask you to give a, a verbal report today because we have your report. But if anybody has questions, I want to open that up right now for Charlie. Any questions for Charlie Phelps? Thank you, Charlie. <laughs> Next is the Housing Authority, and they got David Stone and all that. And David, I suppose you'll be doing the rehab also now. Uh, I will be, and, and uh, to be honest, I don't even know if she submitted a report. Yes. Did she? Mm -hmm. We got one. Mm -hmm. that. Anyway, uh, I will. Uh, I yes. Give, yeah, I'd like to give you a few minutes to, to give us an update on where you are, because I know there's been some changes going on. Uh, we've uh, made some changes as far as uh, the rehab has fallen under me. 
uh, haven't had a whole lot of time to um, uh, really get in and to rehab and, and look at it and, and see if we need to make some changes. Uh, um, I know that rehab's tough. It's a tough program. Uh, I know you all probably get as many calls on rehab as you do anything else. Um, we, we need to get to, uh, to a point where we don't have, like we was describing a while ago, uh, I've got somebody at this area, that's the only place they can do a, a rehab application. Uh, we want to be able to do that at the area office level, be able to communicate at that uh, level, and uh, keep folks informed. And I, I think that's one of the key things we don't probably do enough, is keep the folks we're working with informed of the exact status of where they're at, and they get to you know, calling you and you, and uh, they were out here, and, and when are they going to come back? Uh, we want to be able to better communicate with them. I think that's one of the keys. Uh, they recently moved. Rehab was located back here, and they've moved up uh, just past the casino um, in that half-brown building uh, that was remodeled. Uh, so they're kind of digging in there and, and uh, getting things going. But, uh, Okay. Well, uh, anybody have any questions for David? If not, we're going to move on down to old business and try to take care of some of that. Okay, thank you, David. I'm going to go into the old business now. And first on the agenda is the LIHE program update. Uh, Norma or Jerry, one of you people want to take this? We're, we're going to we're going to do the fun stuff. Okay. Right. That sounds we're going to start good. Start a new LIHE blanket. <laughs> The one that you all bought a whole bunch of, by the way. Hope you like them. I believe you've gotten an email with this. We can figure right out. Side. Is this the right? I don't know. Is it right or not you? Woo! I think that's That's our newest production. Unfortunately, we're still three or four weeks away from delivery. But uh, we'll be making those available to all of our, our lighting clients this year. And we will have uh, 200 that the company donates for a fundraiser. Available for $25 a piece. So uh, we'll let you know when they come in. And I'll let Jerry do the recording. Oh, thank you. Uh, county Treasurer, <laughs> I believe the last time we met, Mr. Baker posed an interesting question, and I certainly didn't have an answer of whether we could, I believe he called it forward funding, uh, yes. where we make payments during the summer months for some of our, some of our energy sources that are not quite as expensive uh, during the summer as they are in the winter, propane in particular. And uh, I believe the question was, could we use uh, tribal money to make those payments during the summer months, and then when we received our funding the next fiscal year, uh, use those funds to uh, repay uh, the tribal kitty. And uh, I, I had no answer for that, but I did call on. I think she called you Kelly Trading her call. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she the encounter. Um, Doug and I were talking about this um, because I wasn't at the committee meeting and I wasn't sure I understood the question um, when the term forward funding was used. The way we handle grants is when we receive the award letter, we set it up in the system and the program can start spending. <coughs> LIHEAP, we don't get our award letter until November or December, so there's the, the issue. We would either have to set up a gen fund authority to go out and purchase the fuel with the hope that we get the grant, which we've, we've been getting for many years, but it's never guaranteed. Um, what I suggested to Jerry was more um, negotiating with the suppliers and trying to lock a price in in the summer months if we made some sort of commitment to purchase X gallons of propane, propane and so many pallets of wood pellets, whatever. Um, I would not be in favor of setting a precedent that we go out and spend the money in hopes that we're going to get the light heat. Uh, we would also have to go to the agency and get their approval to reimburse the tribe, in my opinion. We would spend the money and then we would have to go to the agency and say, we want to reimburse ourselves. I don't know what their response would be because I haven't talked to them. Uh, but it certainly makes sense to try to get the fuel at the most economical price we possibly can. So um, working with the suppliers and the contractors 
and putting as much um, emphasis on that would be my first step. What's the question? Yeah, Captain Baker. Uh, well, anything that would work, but a lot of these propane companies rent the tanks to these people so that they can't even shop for a better price. Yeah, I, I, and I understand and that. So, I mean, if we went to X, Y, and Z propane and we got it for a dollar and a dime and these particular clients were renting from ABC their tank, X, Y, and Z cannot even put that fuel in their tank. Exactly right. And, uh, I mean, I don't, you know, if we could be successful in going to the six or eight or ten vendors and get them to agree, yeah, you're going to sell propane to these people because you have every year and, uh, you know, we want to lock the price in today. I just don't know if it, the tanks are big enough and I don't know if that will work. And I guess what, what I would really like to see is if you could contract the, the LIHEAP funding agency and pose the question. Uh, because I, for one, would be willing to risk a half a million dollars, which I think Jerry said it wouldn't even be that because propane is only going to be 150000 or so. Yeah. I would be willing to risk $150,000 if our elders could get twice as much propane, yeah. even if we lost the 160. because if we lost it, that means that that year no light heat would have been paid, and we'd, we'd been going to our, to our pockets to keep these elders from having no heat whatsoever if the federal government failed them. Yeah. And, and the, the real question that we have to get the agency to agree to is will they reimburse us? Correct. Or would they say no? Yeah, we're paying from here forward. And I don't know the answer. And that. I don't either. Well, uh, one part of that argument could be they already are. If they're not sending you a ward notification until November and your fiscal year starts October 1, they're already allowing you a back reimbursement because you're floating them for a month and a half. Yeah. Or else you're spending carryover. One. Well, we don't get the award. We don't open the budget till we get the award letter. And if the award letter doesn't show up until November, that's when the budget is. What do you spend in October? We generally have very few expenditures in October. That's why we start taking our applications okay. in November for our, our life. Although we do have some carryover, so if we have a, a true crisis that comes up during October and November before we receive our actual appropriation, we can use these carryovers. But I'm just shooting for something that makes sense right. that doesn't change the, the nation's money at all mm -hmm. other than we'd loan the program money for, for a period of time, but our people are getting twice as much. Yeah, cash flow. I, or a third or more. Or, or for me, more information on what the buy type of fuel that we're buying. We need to get better information on what that price difference is, and we need to get the agency input. Because if we can go to them and say, if you will allow us to do this, we're going to be able to serve this many more people. I, I don't see how any agency could turn that down, but we are talking about the federal government, so you never know. Well, I think, Kelly, that that's what Mr. Baker said. It makes really good sense, and I think you agree with it. Yeah. I, I think probably what we have some work to do before we actually do this, and I would be willing to go with Mr. Baker to take that chance on 150 or 160,000, but we still have some time now as I see that. I think what we need to do is look at all the people that has got propane in the last year or two and find out the companies that have supplied those and go back and start and see if we can lock those prices in, you know, this spring or summer. It makes sense to do that because you may have ten companies that are going to do that. So I think we're on the right track here. I think the other thing is the pellet information. I think if we go back and look at three or four companies on the pellets and lock those prices in this spring or this summer, then I think we'd be ahead of the game. Now, I do know on the propane that uh, some of the companies have quit locking prices in. I know co-op has told me they wouldn't lock prices in, but I think we've got some work to do before we can do it. But I think everything looks great. I think this is a great uh, idea to do this. Yep. So with that being said, I'd like to table this or move it to the next meeting.
Okay, the motion's been made to table. So here's a second on that table. Second. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same time. <coughs> Thank you, Jerry. Norman. The emergency housing program, I guess it would be Mr. Sutherland to discuss those. We've got a little kid down here. Some information that uh, was requested from the last uh, meeting when we talked about the emergency repair. Uh, the current definition of an emergency repair is a service that targets critical component areas including roof repairs, floor repair, plumbing, electrical and installation of handicap facilities. Repairs will be made to homes on an emergency basis if structural damage has occurred within the 72 hour period. <coughs> Repairs will also be considered if there is an apparent threat to health or safety of the occupants. Uh, the income requirements, and I've attached a copy of the, the uh, NAHASDA guideline uh, requirements. Uh, for the regular rehab program and for most other housing programs, it's 80% of the national median. The uh, emergency repair program is targeted for 50% and below the national median income. The preference, uh, elderly, disabled, and handicapped, uh, and then uh, other folks or other tribal members. Uh, emergencies completed uh, in fiscal year 07, 426 emergencies uh, that would fall under this. And then there's, there were 621 disasters as a result of the ice the one that they had uh, completed. Uh, so far this year, there's 84 emergencies that have completed, and they have 60, 60 more in some form of process, and they're working on them or uh, processing the paperwork or, or what have you. Uh, current status, there, there hasn't been a change to the policy that uh, uh, at this point uh, we are considering a change. Uh, each application is being reviewed and approved by the director of rehab, uh, which is a change uh, from, from when... Uh, Prior to FY07, uh, when we were bringing it to the committee, uh, where it was coming to the subcommittee on housing, and they were looking at the applications and approving them. Uh, on October 1st of 06, I believe, is when Sharon uh, discontinued that practice and she evaluated it. Uh, and I think probably what's happened is she's been more, uh, <coughs> a little more critical that the, the definition or the, the actual. What's, what's been applied for falls within that definition, and, and the number has gone down some. Um, we currently have $175,000 available from discretionary funds for emergencies. That's kind of a secondary. We're trying to use uh, the Nahasda funds first for, for the emergencies. Uh, the policy revision will take into account the most needy families and the philosophy of self-help. Uh, one thing we don't want to do is is one of the things that uh, the COMP grant, Comprehensive Grant Program, did in mutual help uh, a few years ago, back in the 90s when the government funded it. Folks just quit doing re maintenance on their homes because there, there was money to go out and, and fix those homes up, put in new cabinets, put in new roof, do all those other things. Um, so we, we don't want to get into that because I don't think we'd ever have enough money to fund everyone's need in, in this type of a deal. Um, at this point, the $9 an hour uh, family, the single mother with $9 an hour with two or three kids would still fall under this policy. They'd still get service under this policy uh, if the actual need fell into the definition. If it's electrical, plumbing, those type of things that, that need repair, those are emergencies. I think where the big rub is, is, is on the roof. Uh, you know, someone had to take care of the roof forever. Uh, and now that it's leaking, does that constitute a need a new roof? Well, I, that, that, that's, that's the only thing that I'm hung up on a little bit, David, is that. Uh, I just don't feel like it's an emergency. If it's electrical, I agree with that. If it's plumbing, that's an emergency. If something's been going on, if you've had a toothache for six months and all of a sudden it's an emergency today, to me that's not an emergency. Although it may be to that person. But I, I, think, uh, I think where we want to get is, you know, if we have a family, 
that, that needs that new roof. Yes. And, you know, and they really can't afford it. And, and I think that needs to go through the process. They go through the process, and if it fits the, the rehab, you know, and, and if their need is, uh, is great compared to other folks, uh, then, yeah, we just go ahead and do a rehab on the thing. I think another the example to me of the emergency on the roof is just recently we had the stormer come through and if it mm -hmm. actually put a limb to the roof or knocked all the shingles off, that's truly an emergency. Yep. That's fair. And, and one of the, the reasons that we look at roofs as so important was if you, if you don't have the money to fix the roof and you wait on rehab, and it leaks, then all of a sudden it's not just the roof, it becomes the sheetrock, and it's not just the sheetrock, it becomes the floor, and it not only does it become the floor, it becomes mold. It, I mean, that's one of those exterior things that it doesn't take six months for a $2,000 roof to turn into a $10,000 rehab. I mean, you agree, David? Yeah, that's true. That is, and, that's true. And so the philosophy was if we can spend a little bit of money when we find that the, the roof is leaking, we can save us a ton of money on the back end. And there, I mean, in, the, in Mutual Health, uh, that comprehensive grant I was talking about a while ago, it was, it was for those homes that were still under management. In other words, a privately owned home wasn't eligible. It was for those that were under management. Uh, when the HOSDA went into effect in 98, yeah. uh, those comp grant funds is a part of that block grant. In other words, it's not specified for this or that or something else. So at that point, we can discontinued doing the uh, comprehensive grant program. And the folks that uh, are living in mutual help homes now, if they have maintenance items, uh, they can use their equity if they have equity. Uh, if they don't have equity, and a roof is a good example, and it needs a roof, it, we will sign, we will we'll get it done, and then they sign what's called a repayment agreement. Of course, it could be as low as $25 a month that they pay us back. It takes them a long time to pay it back. We, we might want to look at some one of those options in this program. Um, tribes spend so much on the emergency, they agree to pay a small portion back over a period of time. Uh, you know, that, that might be an option. Well, well I agree with what, what Mr. Baker said. I think you make some good valid points, but I think a lot of it is going to depend on common sense when our inspectors go out and look at that house. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if it's a leak, and yeah, we probably do need to put a roof on it, but just because they think they need to do a roof and, and, and we've okayed that, that, I don't want to do that. I think it all depends on our inspectors that go down and look. They can make some common sense judgments on those things. And, and I think and Sharon, what Mr. Baker said is true. You know, we do want to fix those roofs. And I think Sharon has, uh, uh, in her process of looking at those applications and reviewing them, that she has been a little more uh, strict. Uh, you know, keeping within the guideline, and because uh, you know, I think inspectors are human also. They try to get somebody a new roof if they can, but uh, you know, they need to be. Honest and, and uh, yes, I, agree I think we have a lot of people that probably need new roofs on the house. If we put a roof on the house, it really doesn't need it, and I think we're just doing a disservice to the person that really needs the thing. So I, I'm 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 agreeable with with the new roof, but I think we really need to watch what we're doing, and hopefully we're putting new roofs on for or the reason why we're putting them on. So. David, is there, a, is there a way that uh, Sharon or you can, can run a report as to how many roofs we put on, say, last year? I'm sure she got that information. I'd like to see those, that information. I'd like to see, you know, where most of our emergency repairs are going going to, if it's roofs, plumbing, electrical, or whatever. So I think that would be some good data for us to take a look at and see. Yeah. Do you have a question? Okay. Can you make sure we all get coffee? Yes, and yeah, yeah, make sure everybody gets <coughs> coffee. Thank you. Counter, we have pictures of the roof before and after. I don't know. Uh, yeah, most, of the lakes, lakes. Oh. most of the lakes occur around the vents, and uh, you really don't need a new roof. You just need to repair around the vents. That'd be 90% of the problem is the leaky roof is just a vent leaking. And uh, 
I think if you check those first, uh, save a lot of money. Thank you. We'll get you off schedule of, uh, of everything that was done. Yes, Mr. Baker. And, and Dave says he still has uh, 175000 available mm -hmm. for these kinds of emergencies. Mm -hmm. But uh, that being said, let's let's table this one as well and and get that information kind of <coughs> see, uh, see how his money's lasting for okay. a month or two. Have a motion to table. Second the motion. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Thank you. Moving on to new business, uh, I believe that is uh, Norman Merriman's program with the new resolutions, or is it Jerry Snell? Pardon me, I'm sorry. The new business on the resolution for the family yes. assistance. I have those, Jerry. Uh, the first one is a resolution authorizing uh, family assistance submitted for application to the um, United States Department of Health and Human Services to fund 15 elder nutrition sites and the family caregiver program. These are programs that we have. This is to continue them ongoing and there is no match. Make a foot on uh, most on this resolution. Can I hear a second? Second. second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed, same sign. Okay. Number second. Two. Okay, secondly is a resolution authorizing the Cherokee Nation to participate in a nationwide elder needs assessment. This is through the University of North uh, Dakota survey uh, and was recommended by the administration on aging. This will help us. We have to do this from time to time to survey our elders, gathering information about their health and assisted uh, daily living needs. Uh, this information helps us in our programming and there's no cost to this. We just need permission to use the survey tool. Motion's been made and second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed, same sign. That looks like that would include our community services committee meeting, but is there any announcements? Uh, yes, sir, Council Gardner. Mr. Chairman. I didn't sample all those donuts in there, but I did eat the apple fritter, and boy, it was excellent. I want to say thank you, Doug, for bringing this. Well, thank you, Doug. <laughs> yes, right. I have an announcement. Um, Monday, uh, the 21st, I have asked for a meeting with the chief to discuss a possibility of revising our scholarship program, and uh, I want to let everybody know they are welcome to attend. This is just sort of an exploratory committee and everybody's invited at 11 a.m. at the administrative work room, Monday the 21st. Any more now? On scholarship. That's all. Okay, thank you. I've yeah. got one thing on that. Pardon me? I've got one thing on that. Okay, sure. Go ahead. If you had a majority in that meeting, it would be, I'll have problems. That probably won't be. Okay. <laughs> Everybody's busy. Everybody to know. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, thank you. Do I hear a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Thank you. Thank you.